Go ahead and uh, bring the uh, meeting to uh, order. I'd like to welcome everybody for uh, coming out this rainy day and battling traffic. Please excuse my tardiness. I was caught in 264 traffic this morning. Um, but uh, again, thank you for coming out. Uh, we'll go ahead and call the roll. Mr. Moore? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Hines? Yes. Ms. Jiggets? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Ms. Link? Present. Ms. Revel? Yes. Mr. Scott? Present. And Mr. Thompson? Right, also, I'd like to enter into the minutes. I, I did speak with Mr. Kelly mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, he was unable to make it due to a, a previous obligation. Okay. I'd like to call that an excused absence, yes. Um, before you, uh, we have a, uh, the minutes of the called meeting of August the 15th, 2017. Uh, we'll accept the motion for approval. Second. Give a motion. Second. And a second. Second. Motion was Revel, second was Jiggets. Um, Ms. Schmore, call her. Mr. Hines? Yes. Ms. Jiggets? Yes. Ms. Link? Yes. Ms. Revel? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Motion carries. All right, comes into our financials. Uh, turned it over to Ms. Blackford. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so we're going to start with page one of the unaudited statement of net position. And starting with our current assets, um, pool cash changed from by $23,181.17 between July and August. Um, the detail of those transactions are on page six when you get there. Cash and temporary investments balance increased by $10,553.19, and this represents um, lease income and interest received for August. There were a few um, fiscal year end changes for FY 2017, and I wanted the um, authority to know that um, FY 2017 is under review by our um, auditors. So if there are any changes that impacts the financial statements, I will keep you guys abreast of that. Um, so the first change is, as indicated by note one on page one of the report, an accrual was made for a missed lease payment for FY 2017 in the amount of $10,416.67. The EDA staff and the finance department are working with Renaissance to get this resolved. Um, uh, number two, as indicated by page, uh, note five on page one, the auditors recommended that we record the taxes from Breeden as restricted fund balance instead of a liability on the book. So you will see that the restricted net position has increased. Um, so this is just a reclassification change just moving from liabilities to restricted funds. So the total liabilities a net position for August was $13,798,261.86. Um, turning to page two for August income and expenses, total income for August was $10,587.37. Total expenses were $18,281.17, resulting in a net loss of $7,693.80. On page three, Schedule A, um, this shows $7,864.50 was expensed for development properties. Um, the acquisition transfer dates was added to the report as requested um, by our treasurer. Um, for some, I did not have the exact date, but I did have a year, so I included that. And um, hopefully we'll get some more um, exact dates for those few properties that's just showing the year. Um, on page four, Schedule B, um, this page just shows the type of expenses that were made for each of the properties as outlined in the report. Um, on page five, the cash detail, um, I did add um, a grant approval for 622 High Street. It's included in the report. So this gives a remaining balance of $237,954.38 available to be awarded in FY 2018. And then the last page, page six, shows um, our pool cash balance 
the beginning balance was $42,270.59. Outflow activity, that's all the um, expenses for August, $23,181.17. Therefore, the ending balance for August was $65,451.76. Commissioner, do you have any questions? Any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, I have three questions. The first is, in terms of the me missed lease payment, how did that occur? Um, I Well, we had um, change uh, lessees. So um, I think in between that time, and then we had um, a change in accounting staff too, because I came on right during that time, which was about um, between January and um, February of uh, 2017. So, um, so now uh, at the year end review, I realized that there was a lease payment. So I'm working with the old lessees and also um, I know Mr. Uh, Jones did a couple of work with um, the new lessee. We're kind of combining information to find where the least, least uh, mispayment is. So when you're including it, are you including it as if we have collected it or we haven't collected it? We have not collected the cash, but because it is real, it's an income that we need to recognize because we have, you know, we've realized it. It's, um, you know, they have a contract with us. You know, they should have paid. Someone did not pay. So we have to make an accrual for it to record it as revenues, and then we're going to collect it in FY 2018. Uh, and, and I understand that. Yes. But um, <coughs> since it hasn't been realized yet, I guess I have a concern that we're reflecting it in this manner? Well, it, it's already realized because they have a contract to pay. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a receivable and not... It's a rec yeah. it, yes, it is a receivable on the statements. It is a receivable. Um, if you look at... Yeah, we show us a receivable. It, it does show as a receivable on the statement um, under uh, re accounts receivables, lease income. But so, what is the age of this particular receivable. If it's over 30 days, you can't consider it current. Well, it's um, we still have to report it in FY 2017 mm -hmm. because it's due in FY 2017. Yes, yes. but it's mm -hmm. not a current receivable. If it's over 30 days, it's not a current receivable. And certainly, well, uh, Ms. Kelly, you can jump in whenever you want on this. But before Ms. Kelly does, um, yeah, a, yes, <laughs> um, a current receivable, it actually runs for one year right. based on our, uh, yes, that's or, or. That's not correct. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. It is. Well, yes. then, I'll, then I'll say Current this. receivables will, are usually one year. I will, I will um, say I disagree with that age okay. Okay. interpretation. Okay. Um, the second question I have, and... <coughs> I know you won't be you won't personally be able to answer this, okay. but I do have a concern about the amount of interest that is accruing for the cash held in escrow with BBNT. And so, um, Commissioner Hines, were we able to? No, I think Commissioner Kelly was supposed to speak or email the attorneys about pulling the escrow agreement to see. I understand it's a threefold entity on this, but the interest seems very low, and it has for a, a long time, and we need to still focus on that money and how it's accruing interest. So do we know or can we pull the agreement, the escrow agreement? Because that's a million dollars. <coughs> yeah, we, we hadn't heard from Mr. Kelly, uh, I don't think. Uh, okay, so, then I'm, we, I'm formally yeah. requesting that we pull that escrow agreement so we can focus on what the stipulations are for the interest and uh, who has the authority to move it around, if need be, to get the greater interest on it. 
I would appreciate that. Commissioner Jiggets, if I, if I yes. may just, um, the the actual uh, request came into Ms. Blackford uh, some some late yesterday regarding yes. oh, you did that, um, okay. that discussion, um, one, one discussion point about the seaboard building, uh, which that was answered. And then uh, while he said it wasn't an emergency, <coughs> he'd like to have somebody look at the uh, escrow agreement for the North Pier, which is the BB&T funds that you're referring to. Yes. The and next meeting, um, I imagine yeah. that Ms. Blackford and her, her team will get with the necessary people to report that We'll appreciate that back. it and be able to report back on it at the next meeting. And then um, finally, and um, Ms. Kelly, this question is for you so that I have clarification because I remember at the last meeting I had indicated and referenced the generally acceptable accounting principles. And at that time, I think you told me it was that was should have been referenced as the general government. Do you remember that uh, discussion we had? I was referencing something. In you the were report. referencing FASB and I, and which is our general accounting uh -huh. accepted accounting principle, but government entities go under GASB, yes. which is government accounting standard principles. Right. That's why I was or confused when I saw board. this on here on note three. So right. I was like, GAP oh. is generally accounting. Okay. Generally accepted accounting principles, right? And there's a whole school of GAP, and there's mm -hmm. different things that comprise GAP: FASB, GASB, okay. accounting pr you. principles, Journal of Accountancy standard. I mean, okay. there's you can use a lot of things that accompany. And there's under. a there's a hierarchy of it also. Okay. So GASB is typically what um, government entities go under. Okay, and it comes under or use. the umbrella of okay. the GAP. Okay. 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 Thank you. That's it for my question. Anything further, commissioners? With that, we'll go ahead and accept the uh, I'll take a uh, motion to accept. A motion to accept. You have a motion. You have a second. Second. You have a motion and a second. All right, Mr. Hines. Yes. Ms. Jiggets. Yes. Ms. Link. Yes. Ms. Rebel. Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's move into the uh, old business uh, <coughs> portion. And um, being the fact that we have a number of new commissioners uh, during our um, agenda preview, we thought it would be a good idea for everyone to have just an overview of the Breeden uh, project. Um, this is both <coughs> our, our current, or actually our most recent Breeding, um, breeding project that was just recently done there at Harbor Vista, plus possibly the North Pier, which is going to be another item on our agenda. Uh, with that, do I would like to turn that over to Attorney Miller. Um, yeah, the, the breeding project is something that uh, from the outside seems tremendously complex financially as far as how the two properties uh, interplay. Um, but when you really look at it up close, it, it is not as complex as it seems. So um, I will go through the financial aspects of the deal uh, today. Um, I passed out a little uh, memo. Uh, the Desk Inc. site, which is where Harbor Vista is in the North Pier, had been marketed for, by the city for uh, about a decade. Um, and ultimately, an agreement was reached with Breed in, in 2012. Uh, to develop both parcels. Uh, the cooperation agreement was obtained from City Council in September of 2012 to support uh, that development and then the agreement was amended and restated into its basic current form uh, in July of 2013, uh, backdated to the original June agreement. Uh, essentially, the agreement provided for staggered closings between the Desk Inc. site and the North Pier. Uh, with the idea that Breeden would be obligated to commence uh, work, closing and work on the North Pier um, within a year from final completion occupancy of the Harbor Vista project uh, with a possible additional nine month extension not to be unreasonably refused. Now to get to the financial aspects of it, it's easiest to start from the back. Um, it's easiest to start from the North Pier right over there. And what EDA and the city and Breeden saw when they looked at the North Pier was that it was going to take a substantial amount of site improvement to make that parcel buildable at all. And so studies were done 
and the parties agreed that certain site development work would be necessary to bring the North Pier uh, to a building ready condition. And I've listed some bullet points of the specific types of site development work that are necessary um, in the opinion of the consultants to bring the North Pier up to uh, a condition where you can start constructing an actual apartment building on it. Uh, the estimate that's reflected in the agreement for that work is $6,342,000. So the agreement that the parties reached was that EDA and the city would be responsible for up to $6.3 million. And that's what this little, uh, the, the colored highlighted areas are showing. Above $6.3 million under the agreement is Breeden's responsibility. Below $6.3 million is the responsibility of the city and EDA. And that responsibility is to be met in two basic different ways. First of all, you have the purchase prices that Breeden will pay and has paid on Harbor Vista, which is just slightly over a million dollars. Then you have the purchase price that Breeden will pay for the North Pier, which is about $3.2 million. Now, $3.2 million is still essentially an estimate because it's based on 187 units in the building that's built on that site. If the units go up or down, then the purchase price goes up or down by $17,500 per unit. All right, so it's estimated that the purchase prices get you to about 4.3. So you need an additional $2 million to hit the 6.3 number that the city and EDA are to contribute. The way the agreement structures this is Breeden will front that $2 million cost when they're doing the actual construction. They will uh, it'll essentially be structured as a loan from Breeden to the city and EDA. Uh, the loan is at 3.5% interest. When the project is complete and the city is getting full tax revenue from both Harbor Vista and the North Pier building, then the city will commence providing funds to EDA and EDA will pay back that loan, and, and the agreement calls it a development grant, over five years using that tax revenue. And that is the essential structure uh, of the deal. The uh, Harbor Vista is now up and complete. It is assessed at $15 million. Uh, I've talked to uh, the assessor and, uh, you know, I guess the anticipation is that may change slightly, but probably not a lot. That brings in approximately $200,000 of tax revenue per year to the city. On top of that, we'll have the North Pier, which would be anticipated to be a higher, even higher assessment and more tax revenue. So the combination of those two items will be segregated by the city. The tax revenues will be paid to EDA and then paid back to Breeden. And that's essentially how the project financing works. Are there any questions? Yes. <laughs> um, to me, the the borrowing that two million. To me, that should be the city and not the EDA borrowing. Well, effectively, it is. Yeah, but I mean, directly, instead of the EDA borrowing that $2 million. That should be the city borrowing that. Well, we have a development agreement and a cooperation agreement between the city and EDA, so it's, it's locked up in agreement as to what's going to happen. It's basically borrowing against the future yeah. tax revenue well, for the next yes, round. Well, yes, but I know sometimes, you know, things can change, and so, you know, from the EDA perspective, we certainly want to make sure that we don't end up with a change on that. That's you know, just what I'm speaking to, and I think you can probably understand. I, I do. I, you know, on that. I wasn't here when these agreements were put in place, but I think that explains the structure that I talked about at the beginning, where there was an original agreement in mm -hmm. June 2012. Mm -hmm. Then council was consulted in September 2012. Council agreed to a cooperation agreement, which puts in place the use of the tax revenue mm -hmm. to pay back the loan through the development grant. And then the uh, Breeden Agreement was amended and restated to put in place what the city had approved um, in September 2012. The agreement is in place right. with Breeden. Right. It, we're not looking at 
change in a new day. agreement. I mean, that's okay. that's in the 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 the. The builder, the Breeden Corporation, is moving forward on a city council approved agreement. Am I correct, Mr. Correct. Miller? Yes. Isn't yeah. the purpose of the EDA to facilitate. facilitate these real estate transactions for the city? Isn't that what we're here for? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes we are. Yes. But normally we don't borrow money from the developer to, to um, execute that. And that's the concern. <coughs> Because that's very atypical. But it's backed by the city. Yeah, the EDA doesn't normally borrow money from the developer. Can Can I ask again? You You said that right now Harbor Vista is city assessed at 15 million with a tax revenue of, and and can you tell us? Can you repeat those numbers again? The the tax revenue from Harbor Vista now, and the anticipated assessment and tax revenue from the North Pier. Uh, well, the tax revenue currently is about two hundred thousand dollars a year. To for which one? For Harbor Vista. And anticipated for North Pier? I don't know an exact anticipated number, but I think it would be anticipated to be higher, mm -hmm. given the area so of the property, you, the number of units. The value, the assessment. Yeah. What would that? What are we anticipating? The value of the finished product of the apartments at the North Pier. What would that? What are we kind of counting on that becoming? Do we have an idea? I know you said seven. Well, we got three point two here, but that's that's varying. That's going to go up or down based on the cost of the units, right? Final. For I'm sorry, the, the North price. Pier. No, that's cost to build. I'm looking at what the city's oh, going to assess it happens. at. Yeah. What do they anticipate? You have to kind of anticipate what that revenue is going to be from a tax perspective when doing these things, and 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 what the value of the property will be with its improved condition. So I'm asking, I thought I heard you give out a estimate, an estimated number a minute ago, and can you repeat not on, that? Not on the North Pier project. Okay. I just said over yeah, to just, just, just on the Harbor Vista yeah, Pier Yeah, 3.2 plus the one and for the making 4.2. Just, right. just, to, just to be make sure we were real clear about kind of what we wanted to do here is that these agreements are already in place. They've been in place. Yeah, they were yeah. from a previous, Board, I think it's actually very uh, a very unique financing uh, process that didn't necessarily hurt the city in any way, shape, or form, or the EDA with the, all the uh, signed agreements. But this was designed to catch all of you, all of the new commissioners, up to what um, what had happened with this Breeden project, um, because we were also are going to have another item on the agenda. Just so. Everybody kind of has a base knowledge walking into to this. So, um, if you have any questions about what's already been put in place, I think would be a good time to ask. Would it that. be possible but to get copies of what yeah. actually is agreement. in place? The amended and restated agreement. Yeah, I was thinking that would be good for the commission. Mr. Miller, Mr. Jones, can y'all? Sure. So, yeah. Also, when you talked about the 3.5 percent new ones. Yeah. When you talked about the 3.5 percent interest, is that just on the? Anticipated two million plus loan. Right, that's on whatever mm -hmm. breeding fronts. Okay, yeah. but okay, but nothing to do with the purchase price or any of that stuff. Right? Okay. And that is a locked in rate, right? That's a locked in rate. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. And there's nothing that obligates us to wait to start repaying that. Just wanted to <clears throat> reiterate that part of the reason for the deal structured the way it is, these properties were advertised together as a package. Mm -hmm. Didn't want somebody to come in and build the easy part, mm -hmm. get that up, and then tie this property up I like 50 it. Years. and walk away. I like they can walk away, but they're going to leave a lot of money on the table. Yes. Great woman. Very Great woman. Yeah. structure. Thank you. That was a yeah. very serious part of why it was done the way it was done. Well, we have the barn <clears throat> Love the institutional Because anybody could have come Thank in and you. bought the Side across I mean, the street. I, I, that I, was easy. I'm this com is much harder. I'm comfortable with the deal. It just, I mean, we got it on the record. The city basically is the guarantee, or guarantor of the loan, so we're okay right. with that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the end of the day. EDA is the facilitator, but the city is the guarantor of the loan. They're, they're co-signing for us, basically. That's so exactly it'll be fine. Right. Exactly. Exactly. exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. So if we can get copies out to to the group, that would be that would be. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right.
All right. Um, thank you for the update, Mr. Attorney Miller. Uh, next item is uh, North Pier study update, and I'll turn that over to Mr. Vincent Jones. Sure. Thank you, Chair Hines. Uh, today we wanted to follow up from your August meeting where we informed you that we had received a request from the breeding company to uh, have the North Pier study updated. Um, there is not anything in their agreement that requires us to get it updated. We as staff recommended it because it serves as the basis for moving the project forward. And so at that meeting, you all had questions about how much the original study cost us. And we were able to find that that original study cost us $25,486. Um, we don't expect the update to come in anywhere near that, but our city engineer is working with Moffat and Nickel, the company that did the original study to provide us um, estimates of what that will cost us. And uh, we'll just let you know what that is when we hear back from them, but we have not at this point. Um, uh, after our discussion in August, uh, we thought as a cost-saving measure that we may be able to, the city engineer may be able to update that report. But after speaking with the city attorney about it, he uh, recommended that we have a third party do that update and not the city itself. And so that's how we are moving forward. We just wanted to make sure we covered all the bases and let you know uh, what happened and answer your questions from August. All right. Questions, concerns? All right, thank you. Great. <clears throat> Next item, uh, the local incentive uh, plan update and ad hoc committee. Um, just wanted to uh, wanted to kind of first get a consensus uh, of this group because we've had some term changeover since our last discussion regarding the uh, local incentives uh, program. Uh, at one point, there was a desire of this body to actually. Uh, Produce uh, signage for projects that we uh, that we do fund through this, um, and I just wanted to kind of get a consensus on, on that. If that's something we still wanted to do, we've had some turnover on this uh, on this body since that last discussion. Uh, and just circling back through some of the old notes of previous meetings, um, and basically the signage was, was supposed to read something similar to this project was funded in part through the Economic Development Authority grant program, kind of a way of advertising this, uh, of our advertising our program. I did not know if that was something we wanted to continue on with. Um, I'm not. On, if I could get a clarification, of, explain what the LIP is. Uh, local incentives program, basically our, our facade <laughs> improvement program. The ones that, um, that we, the, the shutters and things that were just done downtown. Yes, so what are you? What, what was discussed by this, uh, by this body previously was that we would, in, their, in the window you know, of when it was getting done, there would be like a little signage that said uh, this project uh, partially funded by the Economic Development Authorities program, um, and then maybe put like a, some verbiage at the bottom that said if you're interested, in, you know, basically putting them in contact with the Economic Development Department. Um, we were trying to use it as a way of showing that we are investing in our city and also, um, you know, a way to promote the program as well. Um, again, this was something that was brought before this body and was approved, but by a very different iteration of this group. And I wanted to see if that was something we wanted to. Mr. 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 Chairman. Mr. Yes, sir. Before you move on with signs, you know, we're going through a, a, a tremendous rewrite of a sign on it's based on some Supreme Court cases right now. So, okay. so you, you, it might be prudent to check in with Mr. Baldwin and company before you actually, actually go go forth with any any sign things because there there have been drastic changes to what you can and cannot do with with, with signs. We're you, about you, a you year out before we get or farther than that. No, sooner. Still on the signs. I mean, I'd be glad to give an update if you'd like me to. Yeah. Um, that's not in the future. That, Okay, so maybe we can put this as a future agenda yeah, item, but I wanted to at least get the idea if, before this group because it was, like I say, it was a wish of a previous iteration of this body. Well, based on the information he provides, it might be moot what our opinion is. So, I, I mean, I'd rather... I, I'll give you 30 it. seconds. I mean, the I Supreme Court case... And, and give a report to them. Right. This more than well, it's going to be going... It's going to be moving before they're likely to have a chance right. if they wanted to comment. Okay. Let me just say this. Okay. Uh, we, we'll have a draft posted relatively soon of the revised sign regulations would recommend you take a look at that okay, if okay. you want to submit any comments because it 
that those types of signs you're describing will cease to exist as a thing mm -hmm. under the new regulations. Okay. Okay. I just leave it at that. I but we will we will have a very you know, a public display of what the change is going to be. They're pretty significant. And uh, you could provide. We could go back and provide you the public work session of which the entire program was presented. Why? And you can go online and watch the entire presentation on signage and how it's impacting signage across the nation by federal laws. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, as I recall, uh, I think Mr. Pace uh, provided a markup of what our signs would look like. And so um, I don't know who would do that now, but there is there was a markup done that is uh, probably uh, filed in the Department of Economic Development as to what was presented to us. So maybe it would be helpful to for you to review that, what well, the markup already is, to see if it's in compliance, because it very well may be, because it was so simplistic. If you, if you wouldn't mind. I don't know. I'll just mention that type of sign will cease to be a thing. Mm -hmm. What will happen is you'll be in competition with the developer yeah, with an amount of signage allowed on their property. So, for example, you may want to put an EDA sign. They may want to put their name sign out there. We're, we're not going to describe them what they are, and you may run out of square footage. That's what I would describe, that you may find and yourself in competition. That's on the inside of the building, too? It'd be, a, anything, it'd be anything on the private property visible. visible. So on the exterior of the building, anything inside the building. But if it's on the lot. No, it wouldn't. It wasn't yeah, if it's inside the building, we're not going to no, worry about that. No, it's going to be inside the building, as I recall. Yeah. This, uh, what we're talking about is the facade improvement grants where people redecorate their windows mm -hmm. and maybe putting a little sign and says, hey, you know, we helped mm -hmm. make this happen inside their windows. I, I can't that imagine that would be regulated. That is a sign that will also that be okay. regulated. Okay. Yeah, that's what I need to Such a shame. This is a drastic change, so before you move forward, you just need to... Right. Yeah, no, we will give you where you can see the entire presentation, and he will send you what make available to the public. Why don't we just table that a whole idea of that until <laughs> Mr. Baldwin has done this work, council members? I'm just going to suggest that my, my guess is that we won't be able to do this, what, from what I know. However, it certainly doesn't preclude the authority from offering to businesses if they choose to hang it inside their front door, like where a restaurant might hang their health department, ABC manager type thing, you know, a little 8 by 10 thing that's framed that says, you know, our thank you for enjoying our facade, this was da 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 da. I mean, I could see that hanging inside Cafe Europa or, or uh, Kathy's exactly. shop or, or whatever, if the owner chooses to do it. Sure. And by the way, Cafe Europa looks absolutely beautiful. It really does. It's it a was, tremendous it's change. Absolutely. Really I think that was, <laughs> that was one of those times I think the government works very well together. Yeah. EDA, <laughs> RHA, really looks pretty. there was a number yeah. of oh, entities that were yeah. involved yeah. in that, and Perfect. it really looks great. So, All right, so we'll just kind of wait till the final regulation on that comes through. And then the ad hoc committee. Did you want to add something? Sure, that was it, um, uh, Commissioner Hines. Uh, for the ad hoc committee, we do have some dates available for the members on that subcommittee. So um, that's for you all to uh, just get with staff so we can work with you through that process. Yeah, I was actually just going to say the, the ad hoc committee has, I spoke with um, with Cap Commissioner Revel yesterday and uh, attempted Ms. Link. I know she's very busy. Um, they're going to get with you on some dates. Okay. And um, this is in response to the request from council um, regarding some changes to the areas that would have have um, that I want you to specifically again uh, that's kind of the charge uh, from council is to look at the adding of the church Sunday <coughs> area, as well as our annual review of the local incentives program so if you can report back to council that we have looked at this and are going to look very seriously at this in the coming 30 to 60 days in terms of making those changes Chair. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if I could just make a comment um, with the program, um, and I and I understand staff is um, very restricted at the moment, but certainly I do want to see some grant applications coming in from other quarters that are defined uh, in the grant areas. Um, at this point, the concentration has been in one particular area, and certainly we want to see some grant applications coming in from other areas of uh, the defined 
uh, delineated portions, and uh, that's that's going to take some, some outreach efforts from staff. Understood. All right. Um, next item is uh, 3215 Academy Avenue. Uh, Attorney Miller. Yes, sir. <coughs> um, 3215 Academy uh, is the former church and library. Uh, two months ago, EDA authorized an agreement with the Portsmouth business uh, to move there um, to rehabilitate the building and establish their uh, office and some, <coughs> some day facilities, nothing residential. Uh, after the agreement was signed, uh, they've done more work with the members of their team. They've added some members to their team, and they've realized that, that their original feasibility period of 60 days was too aggressive. Uh, in particular, they've added um, attorneys with Kaufman Canolas, who I think will really help them. And I think that's in everyone's interest because it helps ensure that the, what they're promising to do will actually get done after they close. So they have requested an extension of feasibility to uh, January, so another 120 days, and we would need to approve that by vote um, if you all are willing to do that. Um, any questions, comments from the commissioners? So nothing else changed except for the extension of 120 additional? Essentially, I mean, there's some minor things about who's holding the deposit, that kind of thing, but it's very minor. Uh, putting the attorneys in for notice, that, that sort of thing. And, uh, uh, Attorney Miller, just as um, I can just take a commissioner question at this particular moment, not necessarily chairman, but um, I am. I would like to make sure that, for the record, we, we're still kind of in limbo of who, who, not really limbo, but it's still t needed to the city, not the EDA, this property, correct? Correct. City still holds the title. City still holds the title. So, I mean, do our, our council liaisons have anything they want to add? No. Move that we We'd grant. We'd love to sell it. Yeah. I move that we grant the extension. A first and a second. <coughs> Take a vote. Mr. Hines. Yes. Ms. Jiggets. Yes. Ms. Link. Yes. Ms. Rebel. Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Motion carried. All right, next item is uh, 1541 High Street. And again, I turn it over to Mr. Miller. Yes, Let's sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is the 1500 block of High Street. Uh, in this past spring, uh, a project has been what was developed uh, where some developers based out of Maryland who are familiar with and very experienced with building uh, healthcare facilities and using government grant programs to do that. Um, I've been talking with the health center that's currently located Lincoln. Lincoln. Oh, in Lincoln. Um, with the idea of moving that to a block that was owned by PRHA, the 1500 block of High Street. And after consultation with the EDA board, uh, EDA was determined to be the vehicle to get this done, entered into a uh, development rights option agreement with the uh, developers, essentially saying that uh, the developers would obligate themselves to work on the project, EDA would obligate itself not to discuss conveyance of the property to any other entity uh, during the term of the option. Um, the developers have been working very consistently uh, there's been a lot of work on uh, subdivision issues, on title, environmental. Uh, the, the key um, aspect that we've accomplished so far is dealing with the CDBG aspects of the parcel. This parcel was acquired with CDBG funds, so we had to work with the planning department to determine that there would not have to be a repayment to, the, to HUD uh, as a result of conveying the property for this type of project. Uh, that work has been done. We're completed with the HUD environmental review, and we anticipate the developers will be putting in uh, site plan materials very shortly. We would like to, at this point, extend out uh, the term of this development rights option. Um, we've been speaking with the chair. We're thinking possibly 90 days. Um, during that 90-day period, we will get a full development agreement negotiated, and we'll bring that back to the board. So that. This is uh, what we're suggesting right now is extend the term of this development rights option from October 1, 90 days out. Is that realistic? 
I think it's realistic to have a development agreement in place. Uh, I think we would like to have some site planning materials in before we actually get a development agreement in place. I think the site plan materials will be in very soon, and that will let us get a development agreement that we can bring to the board in November to December time frame. Uh, possibly October, yeah. So, but if you if you feel like 120 days would be better from a board's perspective, we don't have an objection to that. Our our goal will be to bring a development agreement as soon as we can. Um, so anywhere in that, we we would recommend 90 days. So moved. We have a second. Second. First and a second. Mr. Hines. Yes. Ms. Jiggets. Yes. Ms. Link. Yes. Ms. Revel. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. And Mr. Thompson. Yes. Motion carries. All right. We'll move us into uh, to new business, uh, facade improvement grant application for 610 High Street. We turn that over to Mr. Robert Moore. Please. Thank you, Chairman, uh, Vice Chairman, uh, members of the Commission uh, or the Authority. Uh, we have an application for the address of 610 High Street. This is being put in by the owner, Mr. David Chance um, of Dave Chance Photography. Um, quick summary, uh, the renovations are be, that are being done would be the replacement of an awning, uh, power washing and painting, replacement of windows and doors, um, some additional trim, including uh, gutters and downspouts. The one caveat to this application is that the improvements that are being done are being done on the what would be the rear facade of the building. Uh, that facade, however, is a contributing um, facade because it does face the right of way of Queen Street. Uh, so because of that and because Mr. Chance uh, did have to receive and, and, and has received the certificate of appropriateness from the planning department, uh, because that is a contributing um, uh, facade, uh, staff feels approval is uh, worthy for this application. From a monetary standpoint, the uh, total amount of the quotes uh, given was approximately $5,947. Uh, when you take into account the 15% contingency, uh, the total amount allowed for improvement costs would be $6,839. Therefore, the allowable grant would be the amount of $3,419.50. Any questions from the commissioners? Entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. We have a first and a second. Mr. Hines. Yes. Ms. Jiggins. No. Uh, Ms. Link. Yes. Ms. Revel. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. All right. Motion carries. All right. Next item of new business. Uh, we do have, just as a reminder, uh, we do have a joint meeting with the City Council uh, Monday, September 25th at 5 o'clock. Uh, naturally, we would love to make sure that we all that can can attend that meeting. Um, I wouldn't imagine it being much more you know, longer than what our original first meeting was with the city council. Okay. Um, is there anything from the city council liaisons that y'all would maybe like for us to cover during that meeting? Okay. So, sounds good. All right. So we'll we'll get together and put together some and some information in advance of that. Yeah. From what I've viewed before, I think a brief PowerPoint presentation would be better, something over visual that council can see as far as it, because we'll basically be uh, presenting um, what has occurred since the last time we met with council. Yeah, it's going to be a rather brief update, because I think there was, when they set these up, there was some sort of rotation mm -hmm. that we were supposed to follow, and then I think that rotation kind of got disturbed by the budgeting process, yes, if I remember did. correctly. Um, so it's kind of going to be a more accelerated time around this, time, I think, for us. But, um, Mr. Jones, if it's okay with the commission, uh, Mr. Jones and I will get together and determine the level of appropriateness for the, for the meeting. And certainly, okay. we'll take your okay. your input. Is and there also, any other let me input? say, I may have to be out of town the weekend prior to that, but I'll give you further information. On that. Sounds great. Thank you, Commissioner. I just wanted to make sure. Um, we addressed one of the issues that came up in the last meeting. I hope we we'll address that around the facade improvement program and the grant exactly. program. Being reached, you know, different regions, we need to at least have some 
address, you know, if the ad hoc is going to address that or whatever, we need to address that because it came up and it was discussed. Yeah, yes, sir. Hey, you're, you're 100 percent correct. It was it was an item that was brought forth, and that was the reason why we kind of kept this on our agenda every okay. single month. Okay. Is we, we have had some transition um, okay. both in staff and on this on this commission. Um, we may not have the answer, but we ought to address we it. We will certainly address and update um, as of where we are and an anticipated timeline of implementation of the council's wish on that. Okay. Excuse me. Um, is it possible that the ad hoc may have some information that will be able to be included with the presentation? It, it's probably just going to be a date and a timeline because the, the ad hoc committee has not met because the ad hoc committee changed since mm -hmm. that meeting because of the staff mm -hmm. changes and because of the changes on this board. Mm -hmm. So we, it will probably just be a timeline. Right. There won't be any specific recommendations because we have Makes sense. Just, yep. just as a reminder, I was originally appointed right. by the previous chair as, right. as a member of the ad hoc um, and, and then actually um, being elected the chair, I went ahead and put uh, Ms. Link in my place. And that, so, just, and that just occurred last month. So that just occurred at this last month. Right. So it's it's been a moving towards this resolution, but we've had some things kind of out of our control. That I have a question of yes, um, Mr. Jones. You said you had some dates. Are there dates before the 25th that maybe we can at least have an opportunity to meet and Right now, there weren't any before the 25th. Um, I can see if we do have something later this week, but right now, those were the best dates. I will uh, be out of town on Thursday and Friday, so okay. I won't be okay. able to. We could meet Monday, maybe. Yeah. Monday morning. Yeah, I think what you all offered as a suggestion for council is we give them an update that we have a timeline, and that's yes. the best way to move right. forward. Right. Yeah. Okay. It, and I'm not opposed to conference calls. Sometimes those are, you know, some of the things that we want to talk we 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 tried even just yeah, to to get together for a conversation and 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 sometimes those things but maybe setting a meeting that is a conference call instead of a traditional <coughs> sitting sure i'm not opposed to doing that on monday but i just don't have any availability the rest of this week okay right. and let me just say this because from the last joint meeting there was a a certain amount of expectation on this uh, coming from city council, so let's just keep that in mind. Sure. Certain, the expectation may be to see more than just a timeline on the 25th, but we can only know. do what we can do. The city council knows that you've changed. Ed, everything has changed. Yeah, yeah. There's there's been, been, there's nobody's gonna slap your hand the for leadership of the has changed, and this board mm -hmm. has changed dramatically. Yes, yeah. yeah. so you're doing what you can do. Just a matter of a couple months. It's been yeah. been pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, Pretty drastic. So, um, yeah, I, I think a timeline would, would be would be suitable for for that. And and if it's okay, again, going back to the, what we were talking about with the joint meeting, if it's okay with the commission, we will, uh, Mr. Jones and I myself and whoever he deems uh, appropriate, will uh, put together a just a uh, a brief update on what we've done between then and there, and then naturally accept any questions from from council. I would imagine at that point. Are we okay with that? All right, uh, next item, um, Bill 1 Portsmouth update. So, so Mr. Sweats, uh, Chair Hines, could not be here this, this morning. Bob, did you want to do it or did you want me to? Well, I was just going to give a brief. I don't know how much you were planning on giving. Just to talk about the September 30 meeting. Right. I'll just, I'd just i be glad to do that if okay. you'd like. You know, there is going to be, you know, this project has been uh, ongoing for about um, about 15 months now. Um, we're, we're definitely uh, on track to complete the uh, conference of plan. Um, well, then probably the next 9 to 12, that's the, the plan by summer of, of um, 18. Um, there was a, a, a pretty significant um, community meeting coming up on Saturday the 30th. Let's see. Um, I think the, we're calling this thing the, uh, the Community Summit, a Shaping the Future Summit. Um, there's two tracks at that meeting. There's a, a open sort of a public house portion of it. People just want to come in and find out what's going on for people who might not uh, be aware of a lot of the work that's been going on. So part of it is just a drop-in. The other part of it is more of a workshop session. People get in small working groups and work through uh, items related to some of the uh, elements of the plan, some of the vision statement pieces. So um, that's going to be on at uh, Tyler Community College. It's uh, from 8.30 to 12 on Saturday, 
uh, the 30th. And so it's certainly welcome. Anybody want to come out and, and uh, number one, just see what's going on. Number two, always looking for participants who are interested in um, shaping the future of the city. We've had good turnout. We've had a lot of community engagement in this process. Um, we continue to, to reach out uh, where we can. And so we're looking forward to a um, very successful um, meeting on the 30th. So um, certainly invite you to come out. We would be more than willing to have Brian come back if you'd like to get a more detailed briefing on where things are in the conference plan. We're about 60%, I think, we're at, at this stage. They're going to be more than willing to come in and give a uh, more detailed briefing once he's clearing jury duty for the second time here. So, um, so that's all I have on that. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add to that. I did. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Uh, next item is uh, the October EDA meeting. Uh, Mr. Jones. Sure. Thank you, Chair Hines. Uh, uh, commissioners, for your October meeting, October 17th is a Tuesday. That's also the same date and general time of the State of the Schools address. And so in speaking with our council liaisons, we wanted to uh, recommend that we reschedule your October meeting so you all are able to attend the State of the Schools address. And uh, we have some dates for you if that is the will of the, the body today to reschedule your October meeting. I, uh, just speaking uh, as I think it would be good for our council liaisons to be able to make that event and anybody here on this group. So Talk a little louder, I, can you? I would say I think it would be good for us to uh, accommodate that because it's a pretty, um, education is an important part of our city. So. Um, so what are I the think, alternative dates? If you um, can give us the sure. date. Wednesday, October 18th, or Wednesday, October the 25th, the next week. The following Tuesday, we have a PPI C meeting, so we weren't able to use that as a date. So Wednesday, October 18th, or Wednesday, October 25th. Just obtaining feedback from one of our members who had who expressed some concerns in my call around was uh, Commissioner Kelly. And um, the week of the 24th, 25th would actually work best for him, just speaking for, for him. I'm open either day myself. So how about the 25th? How does that sound to, to everybody? Good with that. Works. Works for me. Okay, 25th. Mr. Jiggets? I'm checking now. <laughs> okay. Yes. We're talking about 8 a.m. meeting. Sure. Thank you. Good time. Thank you. Consensus. I'm gonna be on a eight a.m. Eight a.m. Good for you. Twenty fifth works great. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jones. All right, thank you. That's eight a.m. Eight a.m. Yes, sir. All right. Um, that will uh, wrap up our new business, and we will. Uh, looks like we do have one closed meeting item that we need to uh, address there. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could. Absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, I just wanted to make the commissioners aware that um, <clears throat> later this week I will be providing you, <clears throat> excuse me, a copy of a presentation that was made to the city council about a year ago with regard to proffers. Um, I, I'm not certain whether or not the uh, all of the authority members are aware of it, but the laws a year ago changed with regard to development and proffers. Uh, let me say that um, we have cautioned and actually prohibited, uh, we have cautioned the city council and prohibited uh, any staff from engaging in individual conversations with regard to potential development deals because, in short, the penalties with regard to proffers or improper proffers are significant, and this is a new area of law. Um, and it has put uh, across the state, there was an article I believe this week talking about how development has slowed due to these new uh, laws and their potential implications. I will provide you all a copy of that portion of the presentation um, and we can certainly put it on agenda for uh, another session to go into detail about it. But I want to caution uh, these, uh, you as authority members, while you may not be, in fact, city employees, what you may do if you bring it back to a city employee could create grave consequences. So I wanted to make sure we uh, get everyone up to speed. Uh, we, we've talked about doing a, a replay for the new city council members, and I wanted to make sure that you as um, uh, 
authority members were also aware of that because that is a significant issue. And so I will be providing that out later today uh, uh, with the email, and then you all can uh, we can put this on agenda if you all would like a deeper discussion at a later meeting. Yes, I think that would be beneficial. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Where is the Board of Commissioners VEA desires to enter into a closed meeting and whereas in compliance with the requirement of Virginia Freedom of Information Act, uh, the topics to be discussed are set forth below in the subparagraphs in paragraphs 2.2-370, uh, 3711 of the uh, Virginia Code authorizing discussion of the topics in closed sessions are set forth in the parentheses after each topic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners shall meet and close meetings for the purpose of discussing acquisition and disposition of publicly held real property interests where discussion and open meetings would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body, 700 through 710 Crawford Street. <coughs> Second. So moved. All right. Schmore. Mr. Hines. Yes. Ms. Jiggets? Yes. Ms. Link? Yes. Ms. Revel? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. During closed session. All right, last item we have here is uh, commissioner comments. And again, I uh, just want to make sure we're very clear. We, we speak generally here. If you have any concerns that may be items that may be put on for a future agenda item, um, we will limit discussion in this um, to make sure that we meet the requirements of advertising, but do want to give you an opportunity to do that. Mr. Jones and I have uh, spoke about your last comments, um, and there's some research being done on several of them already, and we hope to report back at the next meeting of your comments from the last month. Uh, we'll start um, over here. Ms. Link, do you have anything that you... I, I did want to bring up the interregional visit to Nashville, um, which is in November 28th, 29th, through the Hampton Roads Chamber. And I, I just want to let you guys know it's out there. Um, I think it would be a very beneficial program if I can pull it up. But anyway. Um, the Chamber is having an interregional visit to Nashville, I think the 28th, 29th, and 30th of November. Um, and it is to kind of see what they did in their economic development that maybe can be replicated here. I don't know if anybody's interested. Um, could you uh, forward that information to Mr. Jones? Um, for him to kind of research that, you may have that. I think she may have, but we'll we'll take a look at it. Okay. So, um, and then the other thing is, and I don't know if this is an aside, but um, the state of the education address is on the seventeenth. Um, is that going to be? Excuse me. Where is it being held? It's going to be held on the. Um, the Edmund Center. Edmund Center, there. <laughs> yeah, what Alyssa. Time is that? Uh, it's in the morning. It's a breakfast event. <clears throat> so, and they are selling tables and seeking sponsors. But also, December 1st, the, um, the school board is holding a vendor fair at the Renaissance Hotel. Those details are not yet emerged, but if y'all know anybody who has a business, that would be a, an opportune thing to. And who's holding it again? The school boards. Um, holding a vendor's affair? They're holding a vendor's fair for MWBE businesses, so. Okay. I have nothing to add. Uh, I'd like to just reiterate uh, I appreciate the input uh, uh, Director Bowen uh, shared uh, with this body. Also, I'd like to mention, <clears throat> for the record, uh, Interim Director Jones, and in particular, uh, Assistant Director Moore's uh, due diligence in bringing forth uh, this opportunity. I think you did a, an outstanding job in terms of displaying and uh, any due diligence involved with bringing together the presentations. You did a, a tremendous job. It gave us an opportunity to really look at it from a, a couple of different uh, angles. I think that's what we need from our staff in order to do our job. I just want to say that I appreciate the work that the gentlemen are putting in. 
Um, <clears throat> just a couple of comments. Uh, certainly, uh, I think I speak for the EDA, we are certainly anticipating when there will be on board a new director of economic development. Um, the chamber's wing dean that was held was very enjoyable. Um, and also, um, I know 2020 is still two or so years away, but let's still keep these census uh, in front of us because it is critical that our Portsmouth citizens fully participate in the next census. So I know I mentioned it before, but I'm going to keep mentioning it until I see where um, the information is being dispersed from the city's perspective, rather than waiting for it to be dispensed from uh, the Department of Commerce. So that's, that's my comments. And then uh, just to, the State of Education is at 8 a.m. at the Edmond Center, just as a clarification. Is that something you should attend representatives? Yeah, actually, I think it would be well, uh, well for us, several of us to attend. Um, is that something we can maybe circulate to see if there's enough interest uh, on, on, the, uh, on staff and, and yeah. EDA's level? To sure, sure, sure. Maybe sure. look at maybe getting a table yeah, or something of that nature. I've never attended that. I think it would be good. It's actually the first one that they're doing, I believe. Oh, okay. The whole, so here. Please, oh. The whole point of suggesting you change your meeting was so that you could all attend. Absolutely. could all attend. Yeah. As yeah. A, as I think it would be good for us to support with a table. So maybe we should um, get a table. Yeah. 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 Could we look in? Sure, yeah. we will. Okay. I actually have a question. I almost forgot. Um, ports events. They, I talked to Don Comer on a regular basis, and he had asked me to ask. He doesn't know all the changes that have happened to this body, but the EDA, PRHA, and Town Bank generally support the efforts of Ports Event. How do they go about applying for a grant to fund that? Um, that they're not looking for, apparently they used to get like $30,000, but anyway, but, um, but anyway, I don't know how you do, or I need help in guidance and telling them what can they do to come to us um, to seek a grant to hold the first Fridays, the farmer's market. Those are all things that return a, a good value in Old Town, I think, but. I think that would come through the city. city. Oh, right, I'd say that's probably yeah. more of a city council city item. Yeah. Right. There's it's historically sure, 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 sure. So during our budget process, nonprofits are able to uh, put in applications to our budget office, which they which they consider for funding in our uh, in our annual budget, and that would be the vehicle that they could use versus coming to the EDA. So budget process it's called civic and civic and what's it civic slash non 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 governmental organizations, organizations funding for, for them. We usually have the application <coughs> out at the end of December. Gravina Young is our person that um, handles all of that. But okay. it's the what's her name again? Gravina Young. Spell it please. G R G R O V E N A Young Y O U N G. Um, and so we have an application process that goes through uh, for not-for-profits and civic organizations. And typically um, the application is out in December, mid-December, end of December. And we ask for them back within 30 days or so. Is she like the arts coordinator? Or you are city enforcement doesn't she, have an arts coordinator, do they? Well, this is a, a she's our a financial grants uh, administrator. Financial. No, but we don't have, so, you no. all don't have an arts coordinator like the city of Norfolk. No. Okay, so that's a change from before. Um, long term, change long term. Because they got one last year. Okay, I'll ask. Uh, well, I'll just tell him, and he can figure it out. So, but he did ask because they they've been getting grants from the EDA and PRHA since 2009. From we where? haven't gotten from any here? grants from us. I'm going to say, since I've been on this body, we haven't taken a vote on that in almost three years. What's the name so of the body again? It's Ports Events. There, I think it's the through, city actually it's did. That's a city. I think it's the city the actually city. Okay. has that in their budget. Yeah. I don't know if it was last year, though. 
Okay. okay. But well, somebody recently. Yeah, we, 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 we just researched right. that. Well, I'll send them to you then. Back to sure. Miss Link about the appropriate sure. process. Okay. So we can get back with the citizen on that. Okay. Good. That'd Thank be you. great. Oh, well, if there are any more uh, business, come. I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you.